the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, he to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his power. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Now to the ends of the earth, see his salvation is shown. Still he remembers his mercy and truth, unchanging but love to his own. Sing a new song and rejoice, publish his praises abroad, let voices in chorus with trumpets. Continue with our prayer and the words of our baptisms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Christ is the true vine, and there are many branches. We pray today that we, the branches, will grow stronger on the vine and that all might grow closer together as we share Christ's mission on this earth. We opened our liturgy in the words of our baptisms, and we ask God that you would bless this water, sign of our baptisms, reminding us that you, in fact, are calling us here forward around our own baptismal font as we come together here uh, for the faith that has been given to us in our baptism. Let us praise our God in song.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the apostles' disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, that he had spoken to him, and how, in Damascus, he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 1074. I will praise you, Lord. from the letter of St. John. Children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and truth. 
Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave to us. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Parallel 44. Ever been there? Well, it is, uh, it is a vineyard and a winery in, uh, near uh, Door County. It's Door 44, and uh, this one, I believe, is in Kiwani. Uh, and we are, in fact... Uh, sitting on the 44th parallel axis uh, from the sun uh, right here uh, in this area of Wisconsin, Fond du Lac. And uh, along this uh, parallel, it's the same parallel that's shared with uh, Oregon on the west coast, and it comes around and uh, 
goes through New York City, and then it picks it up, you know, in Europe, in the southwestern part of France, which is the uh, area of uh, uh, Burgundy, uh, Chablis, Champagne, um, then uh, coasts on up into Tuscany. And uh, on uh, this uh, latitude, parallel 44, in the summertime we get roughly 15 and a half hours of sunlight during the day. We're doing pretty well here today. Um, in the winter, it is roughly right around nine hours. And uh, the, all of these uh, environmental things are going on that create a uh, just, just right environment for growing certain grapes that make certain wines. And uh, of course, you know, there are other factors uh, like soil content. You know, this is you know, basically climate that we're talking about, sunlight. And then uh, if we introduce a body of water to sort of moderate the temperatures, uh, then, you know, that adds an additional quality to this thing. So that they found out up at uh, Parallel 44 Winery and Vineyard uh, in uh, Kiwani uh, and up in Door 44, where there's also a vineyard, that uh, being near uh, Lake Michigan, they've been able to produce some really decent wines. Uh, some uh, really uh, wines that have uh, gotten some really nice awards. And uh, I got uh, introduced to this, not because I'm a connoisseur of wine, but because uh, Ozaki County is a place where I also minister, and uh, they're being asked to found a winery and a new vineyard along the shores of Lake Michigan near Port Washington, an area that I visit quite a lot there. Uh, so anyway, really nice wines. Uh, you can get them at Festival Foods here in Fond du Lac. I, I'm, I'm not plugging them uh, because, you know, I'm giving them a free... I don't even... I've never even wine tasted any of them. So, But anyways, here we are with this metaphor again. You know, the early church and the Holy Spirit, maybe we'll put it that way, uh, is helping us, as it helped the early church, understand who Jesus was and is. And so in understanding who Jesus is, um, metaphors were handed over to us to help us understand this, right? And we just finished last week the Good Shepherd, which is a very powerful metaphor that uh, unfolds, you know, the understanding of Jesus and his leadership role among us. And now we have the uh, uh, metaphor of the vine and the branches. And, you know, uh, we could well understand that, you know, the climate, the vine grower, and the environment, the whole context that really helps a great grape grow could be the life of the Creator and the life of the Father. And Jesus ends up telling us that he is the vine. He is the conduit, you know, between Mother Earth and this, this context that brings the uh, life of, you know, the Father through the vine into the branches. And who are the branches? It's us. We are the branches. And uh, beautifully then, uh, you know, it really is obviously very clear what the message is from this metaphor. I want to add just one another kind of interesting thing for those of you who grow grapes or vines. Uh, you'll notice when they start shooting out their little shoots, you know, they come out off the branch, off the vine, and then what do they do? They start clinging to things, right? Or they need uh, each other. So they'll wrap around each other. They create structure. And then when you look uh, even at the uh, vineyards, you'll see that they have, 
you know, kind of a stable something, you know, in the ground, and then between it are wires so that the, the vines can get out there and stretch and come around each other and then maybe expose, you know, the best we can for light for the grapes uh, because now, you know, we found out that a certain amount of sunlight is really important, you know, for just the right grapes and everything. Well, where does that take you? You know, well, it takes me to us that, uh, in fact, in this whole process, it's, it's not just the juice, the, you know, the energy that's in from the vine itself, but then there becomes sort of a centricity between each of us that we as a community create a structure also for us to help each other in this. So, in a way, then, it becomes also a metaphor for church, it seems like to me, uh, because of these relationships. So, there was a lot of wisdom in putting the scripture together, wasn't there? That's why I think we can attribute it directly to the Holy Spirit, who is really a teacher today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And so it is, God, that this community that intertwines itself with one another so that it can produce much fruit, uh, we are this community that now wraps around one another in a spirit of prayer. of nations, that they may listen to one another with respect and mutual understanding. For peace in the Middle East and in all those areas of the world torn by violence, for the safety of our military men and women. That the newly baptized and those recently received into the church will remain in Christ's love by keeping his commandments and sharing his love with others. For those who were recent, for those who were recently confirmed in the faith, may they grow to love and serve God and others more each and every day. For our five missionaries who are serving in mission to Rosita, Nicaragua this week, that they may grow in faith as they experience the culture and friendship of our brothers and sisters of Santa Rosa Parish. 
for all those who are suffering and have lost loved ones because of the devastating earthquake in Nepal and the surrounding areas. May they be lifted up through the help of others. For all who have died, especially John Touche and Andrew Kraus, and for those remembered at this Mass, Wilfred Ditter, and a special intention, Eugene Steffes, Dolores, and Jack Wilhelms. And for all of our personal petitions, we pray. Yes, Jesus, we are confident, you being the, the vine, that indeed all of these prayers are met with God's light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our preparation song number 784, We Have Been Told. Truth is given in human hands that made it for life for a friend. We have been told we've seen his face and heard his voice alive in our hearts. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for goodness we have signed the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice 
You have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant, we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself as the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O God, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and your entire people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And of all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostle, the Martyr, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but rather on the faith and love of your people. Grant to us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Peace of Christ be with all of you. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Yes, Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May your body and blood bring us your life today, forever. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O God. Lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Thanks to everybody again for helping us pray so well. Thanks, guys. And for those uh, who ministered at the uh, AMBO and uh, the Eucharist, hospitality, Jerry and Sandy, as always, thank you very much for your music. Archbishop Jerome Lestecki agreed to the request from Holy Family Catholic Community's priest team to move from the current in solidum team model to a pastor associate model, effective June 16, 2015. 
This new model will allow Holy Family to be in line with other parishes, archdiocesan wide, and will also allow us to more effectively attract clergy to our parish in the future. We're pleased to announce the following appointments by the Archbishop. Father Ryan Pruce has been appointed as Administrator of Holy Family effective June 16, 2015. Administrator is uh, the title that's given to a new a priest who has not yet been uh, appointed to this level of a pastor. Uh, in the beginning, they're appointed administrator and then moved into pastor eventually. Father Max Toole has been appointed associate pastor of Holy Family, effective June 16th. Father John Mitchell has been appointed associate pastor of Holy Family, effective July 1st. Uh, you remember Father John, he spent the last couple summers with us beautifully is finishing his uh, licentiate teaching uh, degree in Rome in Scripture at the end of June. We're expecting still a fourth priest to be appointed to Holy Family by the Archbishop. Uh, it says here it is with deep gratitude that we recognize Father Bob Stiefvater and Father Al Vike for their outstanding pastoral leadership to Holy Family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Father Bob and Father Al are moving on to new assignments in the Archdiocese, effective June 16th. Father Bob has been appointed pastor of All Saints Parish on the near north side of Milwaukee. All Saints is the largest African-American parish in the Archdiocese and home to many immigrant groups. Father Al Vike has been asked to, to uh, take two parishes in the inner city of Milwaukee that are currently run by the Capuchin community. We ask you to pray for all our priests during this time of transition. How about this? We ask you to pray for the parish during this time of transition. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Please join in our closing song, number 604, All the Ends of the Earth. Mm -hmm.